Planner Bruce Dexter, Kitchen Fair, your authorized Corian dealer, showroom in downtown Wilmer. American Solutions for Business of Glenwood, Minnesota, is your total resource for a wide range of business products and services. For all your business printing, promotional products, warehousing, and distribution needs, it's American Solutions for Business, an employee-owned company. Good morning. I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Norm Abram. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Alan. Alan. And welcome back to this old house in East Boston, where we're working on a two-family with two homeowners. Right, and in spite of all the demolition and dust, our homeowners, Liz and Chris, refuse to move out. They're still camping out here on the second floor. Chris, you guys are becoming like squatters in your own house. What do you mean squatters, Kevin? We have everything we need. If we were building a new house today, we'd run the main drain from the house out to the city sewer using this, PVC pipe. Been around since the 70s, has a lot of advantages. Smooth on the inside, comes in long lengths, and very few joints to allow roots to get down in between those joints. And we've had more than our share of problems with roots on this job. We had to open up the city sidewalk. We get down into that sewer underneath here. We found more tree roots in there than you could ever imagine. Got them all cleaned up, and we're all set. But we still have the original drain line from the house uh, to the sewer. And that is a series of three foot long sections of clay pipe and each one of those sections has a place between it where it's very vulnerable to roots getting back in if i never want to think about it and worry about it again we could just dig up this front lawn and run a nice new pvc pipe all the way into the building but today i want to show you a technology that allows us to put the equivalent of a pvc pipe seamlessly into an existing clay pipe bill kane and his crew have the job of running a new liner inside of our existing 90 year old clay pipe Bill, you have my interest. I'm very curious. How are you? Good today, Rich. Nice <laughs> to see you. Now, Same what yet. is the liner made out of? My liner is made out of a liquid epoxy. Is and that it there, the green <clears> on <throat> the inside? The green on the inside, that's correct. Okay, so how do you make the epoxy? Well, we're going to mix it right over here, and it's a uh, resin and hardener combination. So two-part, much like a fiberglass. Yes, very much like a fiberglass. Okay, and when they get that mixed, how much time have we got? We got approximately 30 minutes to get it in the line. So we don't have a lot of time. Not a lot of time. Now, I see he's got his pail up on a scale, so he's mixing accurately? That's correct. All right, so he's got 20 pounds of the resin, and how much more of the hardener? Going to put in five pounds of the hardener, Rich. Okay. And once that happens, we've got to hurry, right? Yes, it hardens quickly. So how do you know when it's mixed enough? The color? The color will turn almost like to a, a greenish blue. Yeah. And the air bubbles will be very minimal. Yeah. And you'll see a deep red color and yeah, as you can, can see, see he's just about at that point right now yeah. so probably another couple of minutes how do we get the resin into the pipe we're going to bring it over and pour it into this liner right here so this looks like a terry cloth sock it's a polyester <clears throat> woven polyester and we'll pour it in okay should i give you Wanna a hold? yep please okay. just hold that right like that hold it up tight that's all going to go in there yeah okay hold it jim Okay. <clears throat> so what's the, the pump out right here running? That's the vacuum pump. What we're doing is pulling all the air out of the liner so we get a good saturation. The roller is going to saturate the liner that we're pouring the epoxy mix into. And that way there we're sure that we got equal distribution throughout the liner and so it's fully saturated. So it's sort of like a pasta machine where you're squeezing it at the same thickness all the way through? That's correct. Interesting. You want to turn this now? Now we can start. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, and it'll just squeeze that just all squeeze the way it through. Right through. Yeah, nice and easy. Oh, I see. It's given a really nice even dispersal. Looks yep. great. That's what she's doing. Okay. How much more we got to go here? A few more feet, Rich. We're almost there. Now we have our liner completely impregnated with resin. How do we get it actually into the old pipe? We're going to shoot it in with an air gun. All right, so here's where our main drain exits the building, and this is our air gun, I assume? Yes. Okay, how's it work? We're going to put the liner in through the air gun here. Right now, we got it hooked up to the cone. Okay, so you attach the end of the sock. Around the cone. And what's this green sleeve going to do? This is more or less like a guide tube that we're going to use yeah, just so we keep it in there and hold it for and we don't spray any of the air. How are you going to get this liner into that pipe? Brian's going to put that guide tube over the 45. 
Okay. And we already have the liner hooked up to the air gun. So we're ready to go? And I'm going to start fitting it down slowly until we get it into the fitting. Oh, look at that. It's pushing right down. It looks like you're only feeding two or three feet at a time. That's correct. You jam that stuff in and seal it in this chamber, and then this chamber pushes the rest out. Right. We induce the air to blow out the bladder, yep. and then we open the other valve, and it induces air into the chamber to Ingenious. push it out. So what are you spraying on that? Vegetable oil. And what's that doing for you? It's lubricating it so it slides a lot easier through the tube and down through the pipe. Okay. Now, how far out are we with the liner right now? We're halfway. How do we get it the rest of the way? I'm going to put the rest of this into the chamber. Yeah. We're going to fill it up with air, and we're going to shoot it out, and the elastic will carry it all the way out to the end. I got you. So that elastic's going all the way out to where the sewer is. That's correct. And it's out. Oh, you so just, just saw it pop in the line. Okay, so now we've got that whole liner in there, yeah, but, but it's, it's not in the shape of a pipe. How do we do that? We're going to form it with a bladder. Okay. Okay, so that's the bladder. So what you've got so far is a liner like this that's laying inside the pipe, and now you put this bladder down inside and then fill that with air, which will make this take on the shape of the pipe. That's correct. Gotcha. Good. Okay, we're at the end of our bladder, and I see it's all sealed up, and then there's a rope and a hose. What are you doing with that now? The rope is to pull the bladder back after the curing process is complete, and the hose is to fill the bladder with water to form the liner to the pipe. Gotcha. All right, so we've got to send this all the way to the end now. Yep. Let's do it. Okay, so now our liner, our bladder, our hose, and our return rope are fully inserted. All we have to do is fill it with water. Okay, water's gone. We've got our bladder tied off at the end. With air, we drove this all the way out to the end of the pipe, and now we've filled this with water. And that's going to hold that liner right against the inside of the pipe. That is correct. We're bringing in 120 degree water through our supply line right here from our outside boiler, and at which point it'll circulate through the bladder and come out this black hose, which is our return line, until we equalize 120 degree water temperature throughout the interior. And why do you want temperature that hot? We want to accelerate the cure time. How long will it take for us to turn into a hard pipe? It's going to take approximately two hours of cure time, and then we'll be ready to pull the bladder. Okay, great. So the bladder comes out. Well, I tell you, we're going to be left with a perfect monolithic pipe, no chance of any roots coming in. But you know where it seems to make great sense is any house that would have extensive landscaping, garden beds, a fancy rock wall, a cobblestone driveway. That is correct. And it allows us to put a brand new pipe within a pipe without any mechanical excavation. That's quite a story. Well, Bill, thanks to you and your crew, great job. <laughs> Well, Norm, quite a bit of progress today. That's right. We've set the first beam on the second floor kitchen. And hopefully we are close to a final design on the first floor kitchen. That's good. And we've pulled a lot of electrical wire. And thanks to Richard, no more sewer problems. Let's hope so. Now, next time, I'm going to... Next time on... Brick by Brick.